So in this video, I want to install Ubuntu uh, in a virtual mach machine environment using the Hyper-V and uh, running on Windows 10, of course. Um, I've never done it before. I've never run a virtual machine. I just built this test uh, PC myself and I'm going to utilize it for all the virtualization and stuff related to that like testing out other well, uh, softwares like uh, VMware and um, VirtualBox to create this uh, virtual machines and run different operating systems uh, like Windows Server or Ubuntu so since I've never done it, I'm going to just do it uh, as a new user perspective. Uh, I may make some mistakes. So let's see what the new user um, ends up doing. So I found that Hyper-V Manager is available on regular um, uh, accounts the user accounts but then you don't get to this panel this is only available in administrator accounts so you have to be running this one uh, in, in Hyper-V under a admin account and there it is so let's create a virtual machine okay it's saying gonna name it Ubuntu 18 store the virtual machine and the location now we'll just go with the default settings for the sake of learning take the gen generation 2 new virtualization features has UEFI based firmware <clears throat> so let's go with this one and start up memory we're running Ubuntu uh, we can double that dynamic memory and connection default switch no we want if it's a like a network doctor like as in going online we want to go in and why we want it to go online so yeah let's do that ubuntu dot vhdx which dynamic this thing uh, yeah so we can go with all the defaults here installation install an operating system later no we want to do it right now so we're gonna select the image file I already have it on my desktop right here so yeah we want to that's why we're doing this video I want to install it right now uh, so let's go to desktop Ubuntu on network vista no we're gonna do this one generation two click finish creating disk I think is it hmm now I'm thinking since the name appears here so I need to click on connect or start Let's go with connect first and see what happens. It's turned off to start this. Select like start from the action menu. Okay. Mm. Let's 
state off and are for attempting to start the selected virtual machine could not be started because the hypervisor is not running so what is hypervisor verify the processor ver verify that the processor of physical computer has a supported version of hardware assisted virtualization data execution protection are enabled fine okay hypervisor hypervisor update the bias okay so yeah from the fresh user perspective you see this happens that my bias needs to be either upgraded or a feature needs to be turned on in order for me to run this virtual machine so we're gonna go and do that uh, it's a failure so let me go and fix that and we'll see if the um, enabling the option fixes this issue for us thank you for watching bye all right so i'm back uh i actually just go through the bias could not find the virtualization so i ended up searching for it uh it's a bit trickier it's not uh, listed uh, like virtualization or hypervisor it's a uh, since it's a amd build it's a ryzen 7 build uh it's a amd board gigabyte uh, uh yeah basically amd um chipset but the gigabyte board so i had to search for it and it's under svm so i enable it and now i'm gonna run and see if it works so let's do it hyper v manager and click start continue is it going to start or not and still the same error even though I have been enabled it it's saying the same error okay it failed again and if I it says that if you have to if you have enable either setting I did you must turn off the system power to the physical computer at that I did not do I just restarted it so it's saying resetting the physical computer is not sufficient so I guess I have to come totally shut it off uh, let's do that all right, see you in the next video. Trial and error. All right, they say third time is a charm. Um, let's see if that's the case. I enabled the virtualization support, but did not uh, turn.
done the computer fully off I just restarted it so it was uh, uh, it was supposed to be like completely shut down that's what I did and then I you know I said ah, I'm gonna do it the another day and now I'm back to see if it's working so let's see if my virtual machine um, loads at all no still the same error now what is good to you how to slice now versus data execution come on check the loss uh, everything is checked so ah, that was uh, I'm sorry that was a uh, MSN 432 that I ran on the start menu and it is all these four um, values they should be set to yes and then you will be able to run a virtual machine but I'm having a hard time doing so so it is frustrating third time was not the charm all right get a go into bias and take some more all right so trial and error is continuing uh, we have uh, enabled the uh, visualizing support in the bias but we did not we did reset it we did shut it down but we did not completely shut it down like unplug from the wall outlet that's what uh, I'm trying now and see if it works so once again hyper V and stop. continue we did not get the error this time so I think it's working but it did not it took longer and in the end it still gave the same error At this point, I'm just thinking that can is it possible for me to simply to delete this one, create new one. <coughs> okay I messed up right action connect to server local computer and here there how do we delete them oh that was the remote server we have to remove uh, open to 18 can we do that yes delete it <coughs> so deleted it and create a new one machine before you begin same thing <coughs> this time we select generation one we leave this one
and connection <coughs> default. Well, and let's see. We need, we want to load the operating system that is Ubuntu. And let's create this one. Why? The file exists. Sure. And that is in documentary Hyper-V Visual Hard Disk. Okay. <coughs> Eating A. Let's do that. Image file selected. Let's finish. if we are able to connect it same error nah. this is turning to be a nightmare fourth fail attempt gotta go back to research ah. what could be the problem is it title V? Well, <clears throat> another failure then. So, I think that I need to go and check Windows setting for the Hyper-V. I remember turning them on, but when I researched online, it says that uh, uh, make sure that it's turned on. And last night we checked the MSN for 32, and everything was in. Uh, checked out so, right here <coughs> so all the Hyper-V is turned on it says yes nothing is no I can try turning them off and then back on and see what happens would that fix the issue let's see that's uh, I think it's in Windows feature if we can go to control panel Computer management control panel, maybe in apps, <coughs> programs and features. Yep, control panel app left. Okay, and it says if Windows feature on or off. Cool, and Hyper-V, it's not checked, it's just a box. Oh, oh no, it's checked. Okay. So, what was Hyper B G I? Everything is checked. And Hyper, oh, maybe it was this one Hyper V Hypervisor. We were getting this error. See what? Yeah. Okay. So, this must have been disabled in here. And we had this. Uh, black box rather than a check now we have all the check and I think what happened is since I turned on yeah, the hyper V prior to enabling the uh, virtualization virtualization support in bias that's why it was like it was not turned on the hypervisor but the hyper V in general was turned on and maybe this solves the issue uh, since everything is checked looking good we can try one more time oh um, I think I have to restart the computer for this to take an effect uh, let's see okay complete user request chain do I have to restart it I'm thinking to restart it but since it did not prompt uh, maybe I can just try it and if it fails I can always restart. So, what's like fifth time now? Continue. And the same. It's not running. So, we did that. Now we have to restart. There's no restart button over here. So, if the physical computer itself needs to be restarted, 
well in that case I let me go and get, uh, restart the computer thank you for watching another failed attempt but we'll get it running so after restart we're back and see if that helped and are we able to run the our virtual machine or not and this time the menu changed I'm thinking it worked let me click on maybe connect and there is go so it's working okay it's working no uh, big screen right here and we got it working status running I don't see anything else what's going on oh it's loading yep the purple it's kind of black purple oh there you there you see there you go try Ubuntu install what do you see now we're not gonna try Ubuntu basically the machine is thinking that uh, uh, it's a real computer so it's thinking it's an CD and we can insert the CD and run it from over there or for that matter or from a USB but since we want to install it in a virtual machine we're gonna select install language is there I don't know if my language is there like my native native language is supported um, and it is it's right there uh, I could do that but uh, oh that's for the keyboard uh, I wish uh, in yeah I, I'm thinking about the like uh, Farsi is supported, Arabic is supported, but no support for. Is it Hindi supported? Nope. So, nah. <coughs> we'll mess with that later on. Right now, English is just fine. Alright, so English, English, continue. Normal installation, we're not gonna. Web browser basic now. Uh, we can leave everything as it is for the time being since it's the first time we'll mess around later on uh, like installing third-party apps well, so erase disk and install Ubuntu all your program disk and, well that sounds scary but since we're running it in a virtual machine so I'm still gonna go ahead with that and see what happens and I'm not gonna go into this advanced thing where it will you know uh, basically encrypt and it will ask me for my key and all that but no I'm not doing it right now so we we are not concerned with the uh, this partitioning either because it's running on a virtual machine and we already allocated it up about 127 GB of <clears throat> space so it's basically it's it's a file on your a real hard drive that acts like a hard drive on a virtual machine so we're not gonna concern ourselves with any of that we're gonna just install now and it says Mm. honestly this message is scary <laughs> uh, we but for the sake of learning we can just go ahead with do it and hope that it does not mess up our actual ins uh, real installation of Windows 10 and it yeah that's my correct time zone so we got that right your name let's put 
and username. Should I use a password? Sure. Password is fear. Um, login, login automatically. We'll use the password thing because I actually want to install Ubuntu on a old computer and give it to my son so he can play around and you know learn Linux uh, from an early age. I tried Ubuntu many years ago when they were still new and they were actually uh, you could actually get free copies on a CD from them that was the time um, when high-speed internet was new and dial-up was still a thing I was on a DSL line and downloading was not an option uh, so I actually ordered a CD from them which was basically free they will just you know burn one and send you one I tried it and at that time I was so used to Windows that I never bothered to install it again uh, then later on again I gave it a try give it a shot uh, I down at that time yeah uh, <laughs> uh, I had the high-speed internet so I downloaded a copy burned it myself on a DVD and ran it from the DVD itself like did not install it just ran it from the drive um, uh, I kind of liked it but it's still uh, a I did not bother to install it uh, as my main operating system but now I very want well, very much want to install it on a, at least a desktop Oh, sorry a laptop uh, for the living room so you know my we can play around on it and get used to it and familiarize ourselves with it I'm just uh, curious how much has it changed since the first time I tried So now I say restart the computer in order to use the new installation and I kind of think that it's not the actual computer it's just the virtual machine is going to uh, restart itself though I did not see an option on the the menu right here on the right side of the Hyper-V to restart it from there maybe because it was shut off so I think that's the case the virtual machine is restarting itself though I don't mind the actual machine restarting uh, this one boots back up in like literally three seconds literally uh, I once had a machine that will take like about five or seven minutes uh, or even more sometimes to boot up so restarting that machine was a pain and seems like my virtual machine is taking the uh, same amount of time to restart there you go
Um, I want to give it a time, but the last line, last three line actually is giving an R error. It says unable to read data cache and unable to read page. So really have no idea what's going on. As I mentioned, that this is the first time that uh, I'm actually running a virtual machine, and by the trial and error, you would know that. Do I have to press any key? Let's check if the. Performance. CPU is 23%. 27% so I think it's working I'm gonna leave it and leave it to that <coughs> as normal it's just one or two percent Yes. Oh, there you go. See, so I was right to wait on it. It will do, and it's giving me all the errors in the world. And if that's the case, you're gonna let uh, it run. What is it? Memory dropped in usage. CP is actually a little bit higher now, 30%. It was 27. Uh, disk is 1%. GPU is still the same, about 14. Basically, the error is the same. If you look at that, uh, these on the numbers on the right side, they're going up and they're changing. But the error is exactly the same. Oh, what's going on? Is it supposed to go? Oh, the error change. No, the error is changed and still uh, same for this next one. Reading block, metadata. Hmm. This is interesting. I can try to search on it in this window to the right and see what's really going on. to 15 
this has been running and running and still nothing but um, disappointment visitor squash of yep you're gonna see only up to this point of the screen I am actually the LG wide monitors so I can see the whole page uh, it's just how the screen is being recorded on oh yeah now I remember why I never give it a shot because for a lot of the things you have to run these commands and I was like, what the hell, yeah, I don't want to learn it uh, back then. So I just stuck to Windows. And now this running error thing is actually uh, pushing me back to Windows. Well... I'm gonna let it run for a few more minutes. I'm gonna pause the video, and if something comes up, if it starts working, I will record it. So, as you can see, uh, over here, it stopped. It ran out of all the errors in the world, and. It's given some information at the end. Prepare exit to user mode, page fault, RIP code, all that, and kernel panic, not syncing, attempting to kill, initiate exit code. Uh, maybe give it a few more minutes. See what it's doing. Search the error code and kernel panic. That's interesting. The last line basically, I think it's like a fail uh, uh, switch that if the uh, installer feels like it's just uh, throwing out errors and doing nothing, this uh, it just stops. So that must be the kill initiate exit code. Let me search. So I tried shutting it down. It's saying shutting down on the bottom, but it's not. I don't know what it's doing. Um, I. Think that I download a fresh copy of Ubuntu and then try to install it from over there maybe that fixes the issue uh, let's see desktop other alternative download network installer LTS desktop 64 bit this is not working is there like Ubuntu for AMD because this is Ryzen so for Windows for Mac no. How? Oh. Yeah, 
Yes. MD sixty four. What is it doing? No, just fixing it. AMD sixty four. Okay, so we can wait on it while well, this one needs to be gone. How do I cancel it? While it's downloading, I'm not gonna bore you with this screen capture. I'm gonna just uh, pause recording. So I was able to download a new ISO. Uh, the old one I deleted now. And now I want to install my in fresh uh, copy of Ubuntu. Let's see if that works. Uh, previous attempts were all failed. I was able to run the installation, but then I was not able to run the uh, it failed actually in the end so um, let's see uh, if I can install it yes that is not why delete this one maybe try to start it see let's say turn off shut down save maybe I want to see if this I think oh it, lo it loaded oh wow look at that it loaded and it is connected it looks like a uh, wired connection we can turn it off here uh, that's the power button that's oh wow so even though installation said fail um, and install maybe part of it we can try to log in and poke around a little bit and if uh, it's not a full installation we can delete and install a new one as planned let's see mm, uh, I hope I did not forget the password. Blank screen. Oh, look at that. That's your desktop. What's new in Ubuntu? Okay, that's like kind of like welcoming walkthrough, maybe. Older version application calendar notification and all that next set up live patch legal law mm, should I I mean I can but not now maybe later Oh, do not system system information. Uh, you can use software and install apps like these: LibreOffice, Discord, Coxel, Life for Speed. That must be a game like Need for Speed, probably. Telegram, maybe an e email client. PHP Storm, Photoshop. We can click done. This must be the show application or start menu button, which kind of looked like Windows 8 uh, start menu that was so hated. Um, yeah, it looks like it's these 
um, start menu for the Thunderbird right there. That, so that's the email client. And Firefox. That must be the files. File Explorer. Yeah, desktop and all that. Mm, rhythm box. Maybe a music player. Yes, it is a music player. And LibreOffice Writer. Ubuntu software. Maybe it is the equivalent of a uh, store. Uh, like App Store. And looks like. Yeah, back in the day, I think you had to inst uh, run a command to install programs. And I'm talking about like way back, at least 10 years ago. Mm. So let's try to see these settings. What's in settings? Wi Fi is it connected? It should not be. It is Bluetooth background. There's a background. Dock. What is dock? Online accounts. Ubuntu single sign on. Privacy. Everything is off so far. Devices. Landscape night light. Keyboard. Oh, okay. That's just connected devices. Printer, mobile media, all that. Mm. What's a network? It's connected, yes. VPN not set, network proxy. Is it connected? Let's check. Are we able to open Firefox? Uh, and is it actually online? Mm. I can open the task manager here. Yeah, you'll see only part of it, I know. Click it here. Bring task bar. So, we can check the Ethernet here. Like what's happening with Ethernet. Um, So, well, it seems like working well as, I, as I'm scrolling through. You see the fluctuation in this. Uh, we can try to play a 4K video and really see um, 4K video, Ultra HD, and see if this one goes up. Sony Prisms. Okay. Yep, it jumped to see 400 to 800 kilobytes per second, and now it's probably gonna jump even higher. There is no sound though. Yep, 7.7 .7 megabits per second right there from 800 kilobytes. So definitely. But why there is no sound? Thirty two megabits per second, right there. Um, on the sound, there's no sound, so let's play it. Um,
There's definitely no sounds coming in. The speaker is on. So Word connection. Run. This must be the settings. Devices, printer, Thunderbolt, webcam, tablet, keyboard, mouse, touchpad, nothing for the sound. So how do we turn on the sound? That is Thunderbolt, webcam, uh, okay, that's back to 7.7 .7 megabits per second, there's no sound. I but we are going through trial and errors uh, bit by bit we are learning something new so so far so good utilities characters backup on card can we search sounds sound chain sound level input output Do I have to install it? Are you sure? Launch. Sound effect, no hardware. What's the choose a device to configure out dummy output studio application? I try to close it, close out of it. Okay. No sound. Still no sound. In that case, is it an option to restart it? Shut down, turn off, save, reset. What does this mean? Yeah, reset. So far so good, it's uh, working. That's the good thing. Um, let me try to load the browser. Just click on YouTube. No sound. That is really. In that case, uh, we have to shut it down here and try the installation again, maybe. Well, it is working. I just need to figure out what's the um, sound thing is. And is it related to that failed installation message that we had? That somehow it was installed. So it's a trial and error, but at least it was installed. Let's shut it down. Ah, oh, before that, let's check this thing. How much should uh, updated software has been reminded error? Let's install it and update. While it's installing, the memory. 
mm, in use is basically 10 meg then GB is in use only 6 GB is available mm. nothing is happening what happened to the update status running what's this keyboard input capture mouse connection secured software update right there so it was running in kind of in the background so it is working actually So it needs to restart, reset now. It is restarting. That is so fast. I mean with Windows you have to actually go and shake a leg and come back. Uh, I don't know if it's a the machine or just how fast Ubuntu is since we have updated everything let's try that uh, volume thing one more time and then we'll see mm. okay iPhone 11 preview let's preview it Still no sound. Okay, well, we updated the Ubuntu and all that. We managed to install it somehow, even though with all those error codes, it's up and running, except there is no sound. So you gotta figure that out. Maybe you have to like download the drivers or something. Uh, but uh, I want to install it from the scratch since that uh, since I've al already downloaded the new ISO uh, and uh, the installation threw so many error codes at me so I at least try to install one more time before I troubleshoot the sound issue or all that alright that's it it's working well kind of <laughs>